Praise God. I pass the time to Colleen. And we have questions and answers. Okay, so now if you have uh, questions, you can post it in the chat or you can unmute yourself to ask. Hello, Pastor. Hi. Yeah, uh, Pastor, I wanted to say thank you so much for today's message, even though I entered late. Uh, actually, I just remember that the first time I, 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 I came across you was uh, through your book. I think it's praise and uh, worship. I was given materials by one of my friends, 2012. When I read it, that's how I now went to your website and I, I started uh, following you. <laughs> So second, I wanted to just uh, share a testimony of uh, praise and worship. Uh, it happened around uh, 2018. Um, that time I was uh, reading, uh, I was uh, listening to messages on 24 hour praise and worships and other ones. And I started uh, uh, sort of praise and worship in a short way. Like you, you say, you can do it for five minutes multiple times during the day. And that time uh, I was praying, but uh, when I started, this short praise and worship, something happened as I continue. It didn't take long because I was doing it and I was so excited about it. I had uh, come from visiting a friend in my, 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 my living room. It's like suddenly something broke. And uh, that time I didn't understand what it was, but I realized it was the, the Bible, what it calls the spirit of heaviness. Even though I was praying that time, I was more praying with an idol and focus more on my problems. But as I, uh, I worshiped at uh, that time, it wasn't actually for 10 minutes or someone, it's like it broke and I felt free. After that, I prayed for four hours nonstop and it really felt free. I felt like there was like that thing that wasn't, that, that was choking me. It was now off and I, I prayed for four hours straight, which I hadn't done in a long time. So yeah, I just wanted to share that testimony from, uh, from the past. Um, on your message too. Praise God. Thank you for sharing. Uh, there's some um, questions here. One of the first is uh, talking about the film, Filipino people dispersed all over the earth. I believe that 24 hour prison worship will be established by all cultures and all races, uh, not just them. And if you think of a diaspora, uh, a lot of different races are in diaspora also. So uh, we should reach generally to more, not so much look at people's outward form, but the heart. So uh, whether it be uh, European or Orientals or Africans, uh, everyone we are hard to worship should be part of the worship. So don't target just one group, target the heart, not the race. And uh, so that uh, uh, should be the way because God will put, a heart of worship in people of all races. So we have to find them. Let's go and find them and establish 24-hour praise and worship. And um, there's another question here. Since USA will see the nation, would there be a chance for a new nation to rise up? I don't know. Because, uh, like, for example, i give you an example today. Uh, uh, to a certain extent, and it depends on two areas, what type of sin and also whether the person in, has repented. You know, some people, you think they're in sin, but they might have repented, except they keep falling and falling and falling each time they repent. So it depends on uh, type of sin and the frequency of repentance uh, in between. And uh, so the, the nominal principle is as long as sin is there, the anointing cannot function. Because holiness and unholiness cannot mix. Uh, next question. I have a question about the three toes that will battle Russia. You say the war will be caused by some of the former Soviet Union trying to join EU. Uh, that is one of the premises. Uh, 
not the only premises, right? Uh, will be instrumental in reviving the former Soviet Union. No, it's not a revival of Soviet Union. It's uh, them coming under the influence of Russia. They were not, I repeat, they were not form a Soviet Union. So it's not a revival of Soviet Union. Uh, then let's see. My question is 2027 is the time for the war between Russia and the three. So how will the Antichrist uh, was born who will be 12 years old? Uh, by 2027, help build. Uh, so yeah, he will just be a 12 year old. Um, he, he and his military advisors will be functioning. Um, remember, this is not a human thing. There will be influences. I'll give an example. Why did Naaman come to Israel? To be healed. A little girl influenced him. So there is influence from children, even from 12. And um, then uh, uh, it will just be the enemy's power uh, that is there. So, but that is interesting, isn't it? to see uh, evil spirits working through. Uh, next one. Um, okay, I bless you in Jesus' name, the one who asked for the blessing. Amen. Uh, when does the Exodus start? Um, I believe it's coming uh, in this set of seven years. So uh, the exact date, that is up to God. But for those who can, they should start uh, flowing when the Lord speaks to them. Next one. If one of us has an inner inclination, the move to USA despite the uh, coming tragedy you will face, what will you advise a person? If you're asked to go to USA, it must be temporarily, um, which you know can be five years is a long time for many people. So you never know. Next one. Uh, wanted to ask how you differentiate between ambition and the perfect way of God to give a bit of background. The uh, opportunity, you know, will help the ministry in the area of machine learning, big data. Some part of me says, I'm only doing this because of financial freedom this is supposed to bring. Start worshipping and praising this account. Well, two things. Let all your desires be fulfilled in the Lord. I mean, uh, pursue as much as you can uh, and flow in God's obedience. But let God also be the one who prune you and, and bring forth humility in your life. So as you work outwardly, let God work inwardly. So in that way, let God help you to balance between the two. Uh, next one, this has been my desire from there. Join the movement to be part of the group you mentioned. All right, and um, let's see, you know, anyone initiate this uh, part of the roster system of uh, worship. Uh, and we pray that come forth. Uh, on Wednesday, I was in, in the church, let me in worship and he would teach us how to do. Lord has also begun increasing. a lot of growth here. Worship increase. I think the first thing to do is for all of us to increase our worship to the Lord. And then corporately together, I, one of the things is when we pray on all night Friday, it can be that time that you also use to worship the Lord. So let our, at least once a week, we gather together to do that for at least five hours. And then uh, we can increase in between that time. I know there's a lot of prayer going on, but uh, in groups that you all have been doing, but if we can begin to do that, more praise and worship in each of your prayer group, that will help. And then if we can have a simple roster where some of you might spend a certain time a day, even 15 minutes, uh, uh, we don't have to fill all the roster, but if there's targeted points, since we are from all over the earth, but at targeted points, one or two of us is at least worshipping God, in representing COG and John Ministries, that to me is really good, going to be very good. At least there's a, a roster praise and worship to God that we have. And you're not allowed to ask, you're not allowed to 
to beg, you're not allowed to plea, you're not allowed to intercede. You are only ministering to God. That means you're just there joining the 24 elders uh, in worshipping God. And another point that I did not add just now, you know, when I preach, I preach until God says, it's enough, and then let the people do. So I'm not following a time scale that we almost must always end at three because it's already quite long. Remember, you passed me at two, I preached to uh, uh, you. Uh, you you passed me at one, I preached to two, it's really an hour, two and a half, sometimes three. I, I don't think, sometimes one day the message might be very short. But the most important thing is um, that uh, we get the message through. So sometimes it's hard to get a message through, sometimes easy. This message is easy to get through. But there's one more thing that I did not add to the message that in this Q&A I want to add. Do you know why? Uh, you answer, we answer the question, do you know why God gave us tongues in the New Testament? Because you're in the established place and worship and it's the easiest thing for us to do. And do you know why God revealed the 24 elders and to us and, uh, and uh, f- uh, four living creatures and seven spirits because he wants to establish praise and worship in this end time in a way that is never before. Because the 24 elders, you can see how they worship and what they worship, which was never revealed before the New Testament. So everything points to a praise and worship that is higher than any other generation. I repeat, a praise and worship that is higher than any generation. And that's beyond our thinking. But I have a glimpse of that. It's so powerful that at times when we worship, everyone is healed. When we worship, new arms and new legs grow. So that's the presence of God that we're going to enter. And God wants to bring establish it in our life. Okay, next question. Uh, let me make sure I didn't miss any in between. Uh, I have a 40-page meditation book, just as you recommended. Uh, my question is, do I meditate at some parts of the time? Sometime? Now, I would say that at least for a year, go through it, and then it's inside. Then after the year, then you can begin to cut back and uh, maybe do uh, two times a week or once a week, uh, then do many other things as a lot uh, guides you. So uh, uh, I believe that that, that one year period is, is helps to establish something in you. Uh, Pastor, have you heard? Yes, I know about the uh, I, uh, IHOP. Uh, and they have that. And uh, I'm glad that they're doing it. So, you know, praise God. And uh, so we need, we need more, we need more. And uh, so when we have more and more of that, that's different. So the only thing is, as you know, is like altar building. Any Tom, Dick and Harry can go and build altar. But the value of the altar depends on the revelation of the person building the altar. And it's impact the spiritual world. The same, 24-hour prayer and 24-hour worship is a simple concept. But the value behind that is the revelation behind why you do that. And so uh, that's important. And that's why uh, being the end time move is important for us to to understand that. Uh, When Adam fell, why did the animals also fall since they never sinned? Uh, Just like like, uh, uh, angels, when they fall, it affects everyone under them that they have to choose. So in the same way, uh, because the animals were like the belonging of Adam and Eve. So when they, when they fall, all their belongings, which is all the animals under them, also fall. And so the animals also suffered. And uh, when, when God restored us, God also restored the animals the same way. It's just like if you have a pet today, your pet will take on your character and your level. So because it's your property. And so more or less, the animals and the planet is a property of Adam. All right, we'll cover all the uh, written questions.
Pastor, in terms of uh, 24-hour praise and worship, um, are we limited to musical worship? Oh, no, or, uh, not limited. Musical, of course, will increase it, but not limited. Hmm. Because when we, when we read about this, uh, uh, Brother Lawrence, uh, he worshipped the Lord all the time, uh, even in his work and all that. So uh, for us, uh, we are given the, the, the Holy Spirit, means we can actually also, uh, like Paul, pray unceasingly and worship unceasingly all throughout the day. Yes. And one of the secrets is the tune inside. Mm-hmm. You remember the words making melody in your heart? That melody is a worship melody. So when you are internalizing it, it's like praying 24 hours or worshiping 24 hours. So mm-hmm. that melody in our heart. That's, that's uh, the melody of worship. And it's singing in tongues or humming in tongues. Mm-hmm. Gabriel, you wanted to ask something just now. I noticed you was wanting to come in. Ah uh, yes. Uh, I just want to share my experience on the twenty-four hours praise and worship. Um, before in my former church, we established twenty-four hours praise and worship, and uh, what we almost do is um we ask everyone if those who are willing to commit for at least an hour a day just to praise and worship and also if they want to pray to God, then we have an all-night praise and worship every Friday, which runs from 9 p.m. and sometimes it runs until 1 a.m. or 3 p.m. depends on the leading of the Lord. And uh, even this time of pandemic, um, we still have that, that uh, um, we have um, it's purpose in our heart to establish at least Friday uh, almost an hour of praising and worshipping God. That's what I just want to share, Pastor. Um, thank you so much. Mm, that's good. I have shared my experience before in Malaysia, TOG. Uh, we have um, uh, one holiday when we decided to do uh, 24 hour praise and worship. It was very organized. We had many musical groups and teams, so we organized them into four hour shifts. And it so happened to be a Saturday to a Sunday. And so uh, then, of course, on Sunday by 10, we pass it on to the normal worship. And so people come and go throughout the 24 hour worship, and different musicians take on and play. And uh, so sometimes there were a handful, sometimes there were more. But on a Sunday, just before the worship, more and more gathered. And because there was this 24-hour worship before a 10 a.m. service, so at 10 a.m., the musicians just take over and we also continue to start our normal, regular Sunday worship. Within, I, I, I don't know, without measuring the time, could have been half an hour or so. Um, a wind came and blew into the auditorium supernaturally, and the auditorium is, is aircon and, and closed. And from uh, one side of the auditorium to the other, and shoom, uh, most of the choir all fell under the power, and half the congregation fell under the power. And among them was a video man who wear glasses, and he was instantly healed. Uh, and a lot of different, different people got different blessings and got touched and healed. That was our first organized. 24 hour praise and worship. So I know it's powerful. And uh, it was like God giving a sign that He delights in that. And I would like to organize that in our physical church, but of course, it takes a lot of people to do so. Uh, but now my vision is in the direction of establishing 24 hour praise and worship for, so that people from all over the world can be part of it. And then in time, establish you know, other things. But 24-hour worship is now quite a priority uh, in my heart. Question here. Uh, should we train to constantly sing in tongues or mind and thought? Yes, as much as possible. Uh,
Yeah, okay, thank you for the comment. Next question. Um, okay. Okay, there's a question about when a person travel, they always worship everywhere. And question, should they build altars uh, to the Lord? Uh, as the Lord leads you, as I say, as the Lord leads you. I travel a lot and I don't always build altars everywhere I go. So it depends on the opportunity and it depends on the leading of the Lord. Okay. How do you put to death the deeds to the death? Uh, uh, it is by allowing the Holy Spirit to fill your life. The spirit of resurrection and the same spirit that gives life to your body uh, put to death those deeds. So it's through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And it's not so much us doing it. It's like an automatic thing when the Holy Spirit fills you. Uh, no. So uh, the energy of God when the Holy Spirit fills you. There is, uh, someone asked, how do I build altar and all that? There is a teaching in my website uh, among the teaching series on how to be on altar and uh, what an altar is. There are, of course, no books on that. And uh, so there is on uh, the website on altar building. Pastor Johan, uh, I just have uh, two questions for now. And uh, pertaining the, the issue of my, uh, my friend, uh, there was a time where uh, during the, 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 this process where he was in hospital, uh, I was praying, of course, other people were praying, but he was getting better. So I wanted to ask because it got to a point where I realized, oh, I can just desire the gifts of the spirit like the bible says and with gifts you don't have to pray much the gifts uh, that's why jesus didn't pray much he healed he rose the dead because he was operating a lot of time on gifts and the bible says it could be desired so i got to a point uh, where i was uh ask, i was just asking the holy spirit i desire the power gifts to help this person and also i ask the holy spirit to work in me the love of god and the compassion of god and uh so I wanted to ask really, uh, maybe you can just share a bit on how we draw from the gifts in our spirit to, to in certain situations. Thank you. Okay. Firstly, the gifts are given uh, by God and we can desire, but we cannot produce them. And the key is 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, the Holy Spirit gives to each one a manifestation. So once a gift is given, the second thing is learning how to flow in the gift. And once we are faithful to whatever manifestation, more gifts will flow. And God won't give all the gifts at one time. Even when God was working in Kenneth E. Higgins' life, uh, he was moved into different manifestations uh, as he's faithful to them. So he got phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four in his life. And as he is faithful to each phase, more manifestation come. If he was unfaithful, he would bear the judgment. And uh, God might even take away some, some manifestation because he's not faithful to them. And so, uh, number one, it is not us, but it is a manifestation. It's God choose what to manifest. And then number two, we are faithful to the manifestation. If we are not faithful, it also can be taken away. And then three, uh, more manifestation come when we uh, assimilate whatever God is doing. And that is important. Thank you, please. Oh, okay. No, thank you, Pastor. And then the last yeah. one on that issue. Uh, how do we preach to, like if someone is in the ICU and uh, you are praying for them to come back and you know maybe they can pass away and you know they're not born again, is there a way maybe we can preach salvation to the, uh, to the, to the people who are in ICU? Like that friend of mine, uh, since um, 
the spirit was not in the ICU. So I used to speak a lot to his spirit, even though it was from a distance. Can those words maybe go into his spirit? Is there a way to reach to those people because they can't talk? Okay. For me, it is important in every ministry, in every incident, to ask God first what he wants to do. When I was a new Christian, new even in the ministry, I would straight away go and do everything. But as I mature in the Lord, the first thing I ask is, Lord, and, and as I was able to hear the Lord, I'm able to ask, Father, what is your will? And then God will show. So sometimes God showed that he wants to heal. Sometimes God showed that for this case, he's not doing anything. Sometimes God revealed uh, certain blockages and different things. So it's more important to ask not what we do, but to ask what Jesus would do and then obey it. Secondly, all ministry is the Holy Spirit flowing through us. It is not just us. For by ourselves, John 15 verse 5, we can do nothing. And so it's important to learn how to flow with the Spirit. Jesus himself say whatever he did, it's not him. It's the Father in him. And the same way when we do anything, no matter how much authority we are delegated, it's always done together with God, not singularly without God. Important to note. There's some questions coming up here. Um, if a prophet gives a download about something that will happen and, and they step away from their calling, but the prophecy still happen or does something change? Okay, dependent on that prophecy. If the prophecy involves they continuing in something there, of course it does affect because they're absent. And uh, so it is important to, it depends on the prophecy. If the fulfillment requires their continuance, then it would definitely affect. If it not, then it does uh, next question, if you walk away from your calling and did not become a voice across at midnight, well, will we still have 7 times 7 or will we postpone to a future generation? Oh, you know, firstly, that would never happen. Uh, I've gone through so much, I've paid so much price that the calling is worth more than gold and silver and anything. And so that will not happen. But theoretically, should it happen, God, the seven times seven years will never change. Just another person will replace the job. The timing is fixed. It's not dependent on me. But of course, I will never abandon the timing. I'm like uh, you know, uh, Elijah, uh, who will not forsake that which God asked me to do, or like Enoch. And uh, it was God who revealed to me in 1997, the last week before Jesus came. So I'll be faithful to him, to his calling. Uh, Pastor, can you clarify the meaning of Romans 12 verse 3, which talks about measure of faith for spiritual gift. Is this a fixed measure for everyone or does it vary from person to person? And uh, the measure of faith, that is Romans 12 verse 3, um, is, is uh, not a salvation measure, but let me read the verse. Uh, and, uh, because our faith can increase. In Romans 12, verse 3, it says, For I say to the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So it's not the measure, it's a measure. And that means God gives to everyone differing talents, some two, some five, some one. 
And it's according to that faith that we can uh, walk in. But separately, other scriptures do, do show that there is a standard measure of faith called salvation faith given to each one. And then as we are faithful to that, we can, we can open ourselves to God and God, God gives us a measure of faith for spiritual gift. So some people are given more faith, some given less. And when you trace it, it is based on two things, predestination and also faithfulness. Now, we cannot change our predestination, but we can change our faithfulness. So to those who are faithful, like for example, uh, Mary was never called to be an apostle, but she developed a faith in Jesus so strong and steadfast, she became one of the leaders of the New Testament church. And uh, because of her faithfulness. And her reward was also very great because of her faithfulness. Measure of faith is based on predestination and faithfulness. And we can always continue to grow in that. The angel who appeared to you to train you in worship, I think you saw World War Play Piano 990, I forgot the name. Does she still appeared to you when you worship and was saying, oh yes, she's all the time, uh, all the time there. And uh, so uh, she came from the pristine zone. And uh, so they are also Malkisidek also, which is now I've taken the name, is also one of the worshippers uh, worshipping angels and Malkisedek, the cherubim, were manifest uh, in the last worship uh, before the rapture. So he is also a worship angel. All of us are encouraged to be part of the priesthood of Malkisedek, which is a priesthood of worship. Praise God, I pass on to Colleen. And uh, any words you want to add or any things that we want, need to clarify? Pastor, even in the uh, time where the tabernacle was uh, uh, present, uh, the priests are not able to be in the holiest place all the time. Mm. Uh, well, of course, now we are given the Holy Spirit and uh, we are able to pray all the time. So at that time, uh, they have this like evening and morning uh, sacrifice. Uh, so I mean, practically for now, uh, if we want to establish something like it's 24 hours, but we are not uh, having the uh, uh, enough manpower yet. Mm. Would, uh, starting with like uh, a morning and evening type of thing uh, uh, be workable? Uh, that will be a good start, you know, because all of us are in different evening and different mornings. Mm. Another note is that the Levitical priesthood was established in the outer court and seeks to enter the most holy place once a year. The Melchizedek priesthood was established in the resurrection of Christ in the most holy place. And from the most holy place, it brings the glory to the outer court. Here's uh, a funny question. <laughs> Same ending sound. Uh, I guess the word L means God. So most of them end with something of God. But if you read the book of Enoch, they have interesting names too. Because Enoch names a lot of angels' names. Well, praise the Lord. 
no more questions and, uh, and nothing to add. And this is one of the uh, Sundays where you get a bit more time. I believe the Lord give you more time so you can practice the worship and uh, uh, spend, you know, at least some time worshiping Him in the Spirit uh, before you go off. Uh, and uh, then inculcate that into your personal life. And the message is clear and well received. You worship first, then you have the land of Canaan. So let's do that in our personal life. And for many of us, we already experience both to a different degree, the land of Canaan and worship. But we need just to increase more worship in order for God to do more things. And, uh, but our motive for worship must be pure love for God because of our love to be with Him that we worship Him. Amen. Let's go to God. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy this day. We thank you for your blessings that increase from glory to glory, grace to grace. Let this spirit of worship come upon your people. Let this love that draws us into the secret place of the Most High draw us into the secret place of worship and cause us, Father, if we cannot worship you and praise you seven times a day, at least worship you in the morning, in the evening, and learn to give you first place in our life. We worship you, Father. There's no other place to be than to be in your presence. So let this desire and burning call to establish 24-hour worship be upon each one of us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise God, and I uh, pray that you continue to put into practice that which God has instructed, and the Lord bless you, and the Lord establish you. Amen.